The atrocities committed by the Nazis during the Holocaust are widely known. However, much less has been said about the horrors that were experienced in the First World War. Rape, torture, and even medieval practices were part of the menu in the first global confrontation of the 20th century. In today's video, we are going to explore the context in which this war took place and the aberrations that both sides committed. We will delve into some illustrative cases and reveal the mystery of a myth that generated controversy and conspiracy theories. Get ready to travel more than a hundred years into the past in this military history broadcast. The First World War, also known as the Great War, was unleashed in a context of political, economic and territorial tensions that had been accumulating over decades in Europe. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria in Sarajevo on June 28, 1914, served as a trigger for a conflict that, in reality, had much deeper roots. The underlying causes of the war can be traced back to the exacerbated nationalism, imperialism, and military alliances that characterized international relations at the time. The European powers were divided into two main blocs, the Triple Entente, composed of France, Russia and the United Kingdom, and the Central Powers, led by Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. The rivalry between these nations was exacerbated by colonial competition, expansionist desires, and military rivalries. Thor conflict unfolded on several fronts, from the trenches of Western Europe to the vast plains of the Eastern Front, the Balkans, and the Middle East. Military tactics were transformed with the appearance of advanced weapons technologies, such as machine guns, toxic gases, and tanks, which forever changed the history of war. The war became a static and brutal contest. Battles such as the Somme, Verdun, and the Brusilov Offensive on the Eastern Front left deep scars and indelible images in the collective memory, such as the one we are going to share with you, which shows the first use in history of a flamethrower in a war. The entry of the United States in 1917 represented a turning point with no turning back. The contribution of resources, troops, and morale revived the hopes of the Triple Entente. Furthermore, the Russian Revolution in that same year led to Russia's withdrawal from the conflict, allowing Germany to concentrate its forces on the Western Front. After bloody and extensive fighting, the armistice was signed on November 11, 1918, ending four years of devastation. The Treaty of Versailles in 1919 imposed harsh conditions on Germany, blaming it for the war and setting the stage for future tensions. Additionally, the treaty reconfigured the political map of Europe and established the League of Nations in an effort to maintain peace. In the midst of the maelstrom of the Great War, countries deployed shocking narratives about the atrocities committed by enemy soldiers. The belief was that these stories would persuade youth to join the armed forces. A British general, reflecting after the conflict, expressed the need to invent lies about the enemy to keep the war machine alive. These stories, loaded with brutality, found a comfortable refuge in the newspapers of each side, fueling hatred and animosity among the troops. British newspapers accused German soldiers of unimaginable horrors, gouging out the eyes of civilians, mutilating teenagers, raping and torturing women, handing hand grenades to children, and beating babies with bayonets. However, subsequent investigations by Wyth Williams of the New York Times debunked many of these accounts, revealing them to be unfounded rumors. Although both sides engaged in propaganda use of brutality, post-war research suggested that it was not just a systematic attempt to terrorize the enemy. Crude testimonies such as that of a German soldier brutally killing a two-year-old child were mixed with stories of German soldiers suffering mutilations at the hands of Belgian civilians. Let's exemplify with a specific case. German military strategist Alfred von Schlieffen's risky plan sought a quick blow to France, but the brave resistance of the Belgians at Liège unleashed brutal punishments. False allegations of civil clashes led to reprisals, in which 5,521 Belgians lost their lives at the hands of German soldiers. 
Among the rumors and myths that ran through the ranks of the Germans, the great fear was fueled by propaganda. There was not only talk of Belgian snipers without codes of honor. Sinister characters were also developed, such as apparently innocent women and girls who, perversely, blinded, castrated, and poisoned the unfortunate German soldiers when they came to their aid. These cases were unverifiable, but effective in exacerbating the troops by unleashing violence and inhumanity. The other side of this was the animosity and hatred that existed towards the Germans on the part of the troops that faced them. Already in 1910, the propaganda machine was in full swing, even in beloved children's comics. The children devoured in me these stories, in which the Germans were always the villains, and the implicit message was the image of the terrible actions they would carry out if they ever set foot on British soil. After years of exposure to these types of narratives, the feeling of peace gradually began to fade, and the anticipation of war took root in people's minds. There were also true stories that functioned as propaganda. Among the most notable is the tragic fate of Edith Cavill, an English nurse executed by German soldiers when they discovered that she helped heal soldiers on both sides and collaborated with the escape of Belgian soldiers from the war. She confessed before a war court to her actions and instead of being decorated and vindicated, she was sentenced to death. Her sacrifice made her a heroic martyr and symbol of the German brutality of the Great War. The atrocities did not only occur on the Western Front. Russian soldiers, accused of being barbarians, committed horrific crimes in East Prussia in 1914. Part of the German army, led by von Mackensen, avenged Russian atrocities during the 1915 offensive, causing the Great Russian Retreat and paying in kind. The violence suffered by their compatriots. We are talking about a spiralization of torture, death, and humiliation that seemed to have no end. The Austro-Hungarians and Bulgarians also left a trail of horrors. Mass hangings, executions, and deportations were common actions during the campaign. Special mention deserves the Ottoman campaign against the Armenians, known as Meds Yeghern, which was the most brutal abomination of the war, where 1.2 million Armenians were massacred or left to die in the desert. While the genocide of the people of Armenia has been systematically downplayed by the international community for more than 100 years, there are other events that occurred during the First World War that have sparked the interest of the press at the time and of historians throughout the years. On May 10, 1915, a grim headline in the Times newspaper shook public opinion. According to the account of wounded soldiers at Ypres, one of his officers had been cruelly crucified on a wall with bayonets through his hands and feet. He was then finished off with another bayonet to the throat and finally riddled with bullets. Witnesses, belonging to the Royal Dublin Fusiliers, claimed to have witnessed the horror and rumors spread like wildfire. Two days later, on May 12th, in the United Kingdom's House of Commons, Robert Houston questioned Harold Tennant about the crucifixion of three Canadian soldiers by the Germans. Tennant responded that there was no official information about such an atrocity, although Houston insisted that the testimonies had been given under oath by eyewitnesses. On May 15, the Times published a letter from a member of the military claiming that the crucified soldier was a sergeant who was found hanging from a barn door, stabbed repeatedly with bayonets. The unknown correspondent suggested that the man might have been dead before he was crucified, and doubts about the veracity of the account began to emerge. On 19th May, Robert Houston raised the issue again in the House of Commons, asking Tennant about reports of Canadians discovering their wounded comrades, bayoneted to death, and a sergeant crucified on a cross stripped of the figure of Christ. Houston questioned whether crucifixion was becoming German practice and whether the people should fear for the souls of their boys. 
tenant responded that authorities in France had not yet received official information and that investigations were ongoing. Clearly, it was a topic as uncomfortable as it was hot for the population and the press. Let's look at the press of the time. The German bayonets thrust 60 times into the body of a sergeant. Name of victim not yet known. Several men saw the corpse. Great sullen anger at the awful crime. During the war, the story of the crucified soldier came to symbolize German brutality. The widely reported story unleashed a wave of indignation among the Germans' enemies. However, Canadian Colonel Ernest J. Chambers began a serious investigation and discovered that all the testimonies were inconsistent. Although one soldier swore to have witnessed the crucifixion, other accounts were debunked when it was revealed that the specific location was never occupied by the Germans. The news became part of war propaganda, used by the Allies to stoke outrage. The story of the crucifixion was intertwined with other propaganda narratives of the time, such as the rapture of Belgium and the Angels of Mons, underlining the complexity of information in times of war and the need for critical analysis of historical events. The tragic legend was told in various ways, but the most widespread version told how the Germans, in an act of unimaginable horror, captured the Canadian soldier and cruelly crucified him with bayonets on a makeshift wooden cross. The grim setting of the story used to be Maple Copse, near Sanctuary Wood in the Ypres sector, a place that would be marked with the macabre memory of that atrocious act. However, the story varied depending on who was telling it. The victim was not always Canadian. Ian Hay, dating the incident to the spring of 1915, maintained that the victim was British and that she was crucified on a tree by German cavalrymen. Even a version that emerged from the Los Angeles newspapers stated that there were two crucified recruits. In this horror enigma, a Canadian soldier, a first-hand witness to the grisly spectacle, suggested that the crucified man could be a medical service sergeant, possibly originally from Brantford. The identification would be consistent with Sergeant Thomas Elliott of Brantford, but the plot unraveled when Elliott himself, alive and safe, wrote to his local pastor, to deny that he had been a victim of the terrible event. Another testimony to this grim episode came from Private George Berry of the 13th Battalion. He recounted how on April 24, 1915, as the 1st Canadian Division withdrew from the rear following a devastating gas attack on April 22, it encountered a group of Germans in the town of saint julien Among them, he glimpsed the macabre scene of a man in a British uniform crucified on a pole with eight bayonets. The versions continued to swirl without confirming the reality of the facts. The notoriety of the case and its controversy sparked inspiration in some creators. The first use, more crude and propagandistic, was to make a film, The Prussian Cur, from 1918, in which graphic scenes of the crucifixion of a soldier were presented. Furthermore, the same year, the British artist Francis Derwent Wood created the sculpture The Golgotha of Canada, representing the crucified Canadian soldier. Scheduled for an exhibition in 1919, the work generated controversy due to the dubious veracity of the story. Despite the evidence presented, the sculpture was removed before the inauguration due to questions from the German government, which wanted to preserve its international reputation. The work was kept until the end of the century, when it resurfaced in an exhibition in 2000, once again fueling the controversy over the authenticity of the story of the crucified soldier. This event also inspired the British documentary filmmaker, Ian Overton, who immersed himself in the investigation of legends and myths of the First World War, including the chilling story of the crucified soldier. He culminated in a television documentary broadcast in 2002 as part of the fascinating Secret History series on Channel 4 in the United Kingdom. Let's see the chilling beginning. After the war, the Germans claimed that Allied atrocity accusations were propaganda. But now, new evidence uncovers the real record of the German army and reveals the untold true story of the crucified soldier. Overton unraveled layers upon layers of mystery 
as he uncovered new historical evidence that shed light on the true identity of the crucified soldier. This was Sergeant Harry Band of the Central Ontario Canadian Infantry Regiment, who was reported missing in action on April the 24th, 1915 near Ypres. Other soldiers in his unit expressed their condolences to his sister, Elizabeth Petrie, and a year later, a letter sent to her by one of his comrades confirmed the tragedy. Harry Band was the crucified soldier. The trail of evidence unearthed by Overton to confirm the story included a typewritten note from a British nurse found in the little collection of war correspondence at the University of Leeds. The note detailed Corporal C.M. Brown's comments to Nurse Ursula Violet Challoner, revealing Band's tragic crucifixion on a barn door with five bayonets stuck into it. Unfortunately, his body could never be recovered, but his memory lives on in the monument at Menin Gate. Despite the notoriety of this macabre and particular case, the most violent and ruthless practices were often aimed at civilian women who had no way to respond to such savage atrocities. The echoes of violence resonated from the Belgian and French countryside to the Serbian territories, leaving dark marks on the fabric of society. German soldiers, as standard bearers of misfortune, perpetrated atrocious acts against men, but primarily against women and children in Belgium and France during the dark days of 1914. The horror spread like a dark tide, unleashing violence and suffering on innocent communities. In this tide of cruelty, women endured inhuman punishments. The female part of the civilian populations was often seen as loot and not as human beings. For that reason, they were systematically raped and abused their bodies mutilated, especially in the breasts and genitals. Specialized historians maintain that this was a way for the aggressors to feel that they were marking territory in the enemy camp. A witness witnessed how a German soldier mutilated a woman, cutting off her breasts after killing her, and observed numerous women's corpses scattered on the streets of Belgium. Women were seen wrapped in saber blades, others subjected to whippings, while some desperately tried to flee their homes engulfed in flames. Many of the women who suffered during the First World War were tortured before being raped, just for macabre fun. Something truly aberrant about these actions is that they were carried out not in secret dark corners, but in broad daylight in the town squares. The soldiers forced their families to watch the grotesque spectacle, turning the crime into a gruesome ritual that symbolized the submission of the defeated. The victims, beyond numbers and statistics, shared the weight of the misfortune. Many of the raped women who were not murdered after sexual intercourse died from infections and venereal diseases transmitted by their attackers. The consequences of the First World War were profound and long-lasting. During the relentless four years it lasted, more than 8.5 million soldiers perished on the battlefields, but the tragedy was not limited to the military ranks. A devastating 13 million civilians perished, mostly from famine, resource deprivation, and disease. This colossal misery was compounded by the barbaric acts we explore in this video, defined as atrocities. Officially, they were noted as acts of violence repudiated by contemporaries as a violation of morality or the laws and customs of war. The conflict also caused radical political changes, with the disappearance of empires such as the Austro-Hungarian and the Ottoman, New states emerged in their place, but the borders drawn in the Treaty of Versailles sowed the seeds of later conflicts that led to an equally bloody conflict. The Great War was a milestone that marked the 20th century and left a legacy of physical and psychological scars in the history of humanity. However, history still had in store for the population of the planet the appearance of Adolf Hitler and the beginning of the Second World War a tragedy that cannot be explained without the violent and inhuman precedents that arose in the First War. In this way, we are reaching the end of today's tragic and moving video. We thank you for reaching the end and we look forward to seeing you in the next installments of Military History.